Hey guys, and welcome back to part two of Sudoku Solver with backtracking. Now, uh, I guess let's just get right into it. We've only got two more functions actually to code, and then we'll go through the solution, uh, print out kind of some of the steps, and look at exactly how it's working and why it's doing that one more time to just make sure everyone really understands what's actually going on here. Now, uh, what we need to do, first of all, is remember we were talking about the things we kind of need to do. So obviously we need to be able to print the board out uh, just for a nice visual. And then we also need to find empty, uh, sorry, excuse me, spaces, which is what we're doing here. Now, the next thing we need to do is find if the current board is valid. So given uh, kind of a position and a board, check if by like when we try to put that in or given the board, is it valid or not? Uh, so to do this is pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is just define valid. And what we're going to do is we're going to take three parameters, which is board um, number, which is the the thing we've inserted, and then a position. Now, our position we'd like to come in as, uh, as actually this, this IJ here. So what we'll do to start is, well, we need to check uh, three things. So essentially, we need to check the row, the column, and kind of the little square that, what do you call it, that we're in. So to do this, what we'll simply do is just say, uh, well, we'll do the first step, which is check row. Now checking the row is pretty straightforward. So is checking the column, the square is a bit more complicated, but it's not that difficult. So what we're going to do for the row is we'll simply loop through every single column in the in the given row. So to do that, well, we'll just say for I in range, the length of BO zero which I mean, will be nine, but I'm just doing this in case we like made the board bigger or something. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll say if BO, and we'll say position, which is what we're going to be given zero, which will stand for actually the row, because remember, we're going to get it in as row column. So position zero of pause, which will be a tuple will be the row. So for this row, uh, we'll check if pause zero, and then I equals equals num. And if pause one does not equal I, and then what we'll simply say is return false. Now what this does, I know I went through this kind of fast is essentially we're going to check through each um, column. So like each element in the row, and we're going to see if it's equal to whatever the number is that we just added in. Now, what we'll do though, is we'll say, uh, what do you call it as long as like, we're going to check that. But if the position we're checking is actually the position that we um, we just inserted something into, then we won't bother checking that. So that's what this does here is it essentially says, well, yeah, obviously, we're going to find the number that we're looking for because we just put it in like that's what we're going to do in the other function is we're going to insert it into the board. So we'll just make sure that when we're checking through the board, that if it's the position we just inserted, we ignore that position. But if it's any other position, obviously that we're, that's going to matter because that means we have two of the same numbers in that row, right? Okay, so that's that's fine for that. So now we're going to check the column, so uh, vertically. So to do this, um, again, it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to say for i in range and then the length of bo. And what we're going to do is literally like the exact same thing as this, except we're just going to change uh, this right here, and, and you'll see this in a second. So I'm going to say instead of this, we're going to say this is i. Uh, yes, that's I and this is pause one and then same thing here. We'll just say if pause zero does not equal I now what this is going to do is very is same thing as this script is going to go down. Now the way it goes down is we're going to loop through every single row. So zero to nine or zero to eight, I guess in this case. And then what we'll do is we'll just check if our current kind of X value or column value is equal to, um, the same number that we just inserted for each row. And again, we'll make sure that it's not the exact position that we just inserted something into pretty straightforward. Uh, okay. And now we need to actually check like the three by three little cubes to make sure that the same number is not in there. This one is a bit more uh, confusing, but it's not that difficult. So what we're going to do is we need to determine kind of which box we're in. So maybe I can bring up my output here. Yeah. So we need to determine, are we in this box, this, but like one of nine boxes. So to do that, we're just going to use a bit of integer division to figure out essentially which box we're in. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to say box underscore X equals, and we'll say box underscore Y equals. And for X, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get well, our X position, which is going to be the first position because that's our column, right? We're going to integer divide that by three. And then we're going to say pause zero. 
integer division by three. Now, what this is going to do, let me bring up this again, is given a position. So let's say like this position here is three uh, or is zero three, right? So row zero, column three. So we're going to say, well, what box are we in? So if our row is zero, well, zero integer division by three is zero, which means we're going to be in the box at position zero. Okay. Uh, which means like the highest up level box. All right. <laughs> and then what we're going to be in is, well, we're going to be in uh, box one in terms of X because well, three integer division by three is three. So that means, well, we're in this box. So you can think of it like zero one or one zero, whereas the top here is zero zero. So this box that I'm highlighting uh, in the top left is zero zero. This one would be zero one. This one would be zero two. Then we go one zero. 1, 1, 1, 2, and so on and so forth. Okay, that's how we're going to do the boxes. So now that we know what box we're in, where were we here? We're going to loop through that box. So we're simply just going to loop through all nine elements in that box. And then again, make sure that we don't have the same element appearing twice. So to do that is very straightforward. We're going to say 4i in range, and we're going to say box underscore y multiplied by 3, comma, box underscore y multiplied by three plus three and then we're going to repeat this so actually we'll do that um except we're just going to do j and we're going to change this to be x and i'll talk about why we do this in one second okay so what are we doing here so essentially why are we multiplying by three is the main question well the thing is right this these values are going to give us either zero one zero one or two so if we get something like two, well, that means we're in this box, right? Um, on this side. So somewhere on the far right hand side. So to actually check through these elements, well, this element starts at index six and then seven and then eight. So to get there, uh, what we need to do is we need to simply find what box we're in and multiply it by three. So if we're in box two, well, we need to multiply that by three to get to index six. And then same thing for the Y value, right? Like say we're down here. Well, We've gotten to the right, but now we need to get down. So if we say that we're in box at Y value two, well, we need to multiply that by three. So that's where we're going to start here. And then by adding three, what we'll do is we'll add one more then. So we'll be like down outside of the screen or outside of the box. But since the for loops only go to, uh, what is it? They don't include the last element. We'll end up looping through zero, four, zero, one, zero, zero, two, zero, seven, right? We'll loop through all those elements. That's the way this works. So now, uh, what we'll simply do is we're going to say if and then we'll say B O and in this case, I J equals equals num. And we'll say, uh, I J does not equal to position. Then we will return false. So exact same thing as before. We'll loop through the box. We'll check if any other element in the box is equal to the one we just added again, making sure that we're not going to check the same position that we just added in. Uh, and then if that's true, we'll return false. Cause obviously we found duplicate. Now, if we make it to the end of all these checks, then that means everything's fine it is actually a valid position. So we will return true and that's it for valid. Um, so now we just need to actually code the algorithm that's going to use these functions and backtrack for us. So to do this, I'm just going to call this solve and all it's going to take is BO, which is just going to stand again for board. Um, now to do this uh, is actually fairly straightforward. We're going to do this recursively, which means that we're going to call this function from inside of itself. Now, our base case for the recursion is going to be that this is full, meaning that we've actually filled up the entire board. Now, remember the way that our backtracking algorithm works is actually once we get down to like this position here, we've completed the board and we found a solution because if we ever reach a position where that solution isn't valid, right? Like say, remember when we got here and we had eight, we backtracked and we went back, which means that eventually when we hit the end of our board, we've actually found the solution because there's no other possible way to get there other than what we've done so far. So that is um, essentially how that works. Uh, once we reach the end of the board, we fill everything up. We've actually found the solution. We don't need to check if that's a valid solution because we will have already found it based on the way that our algorithm works. So what we'll simply do is we'll say if, uh, and then we're going to check actually find empty. So we're going to say, I know, we'll do this. We're going to say find equals find empty given the board. And we'll say if not find now, if not find what we're going to do is we're actually going to return true. 
which means that we've found the solution that we're done. So this function simply returns to us either true or false, indicating whether we found the solution or not. Now, otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say row column equals find. And then down here, we're actually going to start our algorithm. So this is the base case of recursion. Essentially, what this means is once we reach this case, we're done and we're going to be working through the recursive um, algorithm to us eventually try and hit this case. So once we get to a case where the board is full, we finished, we've completed, we found the solution. And that's what's known as our base case of recursion. Now, if this is not the case, well, that means that find uh, must have returned some value to us, which is going to be a row uh, and a column. Now, actually, I think I need to go into uh, find empty and I need to actually, go, sorry, go down here and return none. Now, this just means that uh, essentially, if there is no squares that are equal to zero, no blank squares, return none, which means that it will trigger this. So we could return false as well. Uh, and we'll say we're done. Okay. So now after that, we have row column equals find, which was returned from here, obviously. So what we'll do is we're going to say now is we're going to loop through the values one to nine and attempt to put those in our solution. Remember, that's what we do. We're going to check through all those values. So to do that, we're going to say for I in range 110, which means we'll go through one and nine uh, inclusively. Then what we'll do is we're going to try um, this value inside of our solution. So I'll show you this in one second. OK, so we're going to say if valid and then board number and what do you call it? Position, which is going to be row column, because that's the position we found that was empty. And num actually is going to be I, excuse me here. So if this is valid, what we'll do is we will plug in um, that value. So to plug in that value, what we're going to do is we're essentially going to put it in the board. So we're going to say board at position, which is going to be row column equals I like that. Okay. So what we're going to do is loop through values one to 10. We're going to make sure that if we add them into the board, um, like they'll be valid. So we'll add them. And then what do you call it? If they are uh, valid or whatever, like, so if they're valid, then we'll add it into the board. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to make sure that, or we're going to, we're going to try to solve the solution from this point forward. You guys will see this works in seconds. So we're going to say if solve B O then we're simply going to return true. Otherwise, so we actually don't need an else, but we'll just say B O row call equals zero. And then at the end here, we're going to return false. And this is actually our entire solution. Like we're actually finished, but I'm going to walk through step by step how this works. Cause I know it's a bit confusing. So what we're doing, right, is we're checking, we're going to loop through values one to 10 or one to nine. And we're going to check if by adding those into our board, it would be a valid solution. Okay, we try that. If it's valid, what we'll do is we'll actually add it into the board. And then what we'll do is we'll recursively try to finish the solution by calling solve on our new board. So we're going to add, let's say like one into the board, and then we're going to call solve again with that new value added and keep trying, 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 trying until eventually we either find a solution or we get to the point where we've looped through all the different numbers and none of them are valid. Now, if that happens, right? If we loop through all the numbers and none of them are valid, we're going to return false, which means that obviously solve isn't going to be true. So we're going to backtrack and say that the last element that we just added reset it because that that can't be correct and maybe possibly try this for loop again with a different value. Right. That's what we need to do. So that's essentially the way the solution works. If we can't finish the solution based on whatever value we've just added, we need to reset that value and try a different value and then repeat that process again recursively. And that's kind of the only way I can explain this. If you don't understand it after that, I'd recommend go back and watch the first video on how I went through all this stuff. But now all we have to actually do to solve this solution is simply call solve on board. Now what I'm going to do is print board before and print board after because I want to see the difference and I want to see the solved solution. So that, that's all we need to do. Let me make sure I didn't make any mistakes, which I likely did. Um, okay, so well, I just I should probably use our function that's print board to get that nice output. So let's do that actually my bad on that. Uh, and let's also print a space so that we can actually see it. Let's just do that. Okay. Now let's try it. All right, there we go. So this is what we started with. 
and this is our finished solution. Now, I'll quickly skim through it and make sure that there's no like very visible mistakes, but I'm pretty sure um, that this is correct and this actually did work. So that is essentially how we use um, this kind of method of backtracking to solve our Sudoku board. And notice that this happened pretty well instantly. Like I didn't have to wait at all for this to happen. And that's because of the backtracking. But if I had done the naive solution that we talked about before, well, we would still be sitting here and sitting here and probably waiting for a few days for this to actually happen, which is obviously not ideal. So anyways, that is kind of it. For any of you that really are still interested and still watching right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out step by step what happens to the board every time that we call this solve function so that you guys can get an idea of exactly what uh, is going on. So let's do this. Uh, I'm going to print this. There's quite a few steps, but let's go up to the beginning and look at some of them. So uh, I want to like, obviously, let's just look at this first row. OK, so what we start by doing is obviously it's right here is the first zero we find. So we're going to try to insert uh, any valid values in here. Now, the valid one that we find is three. So we try three. And then what we do is we go to the next step and we try nine. Now, we notice that when we, by putting nine in here at the next step, there's no valid position we can use. So what we do is we set nine uh, back to zero. So we backtracked. OK, and we change the value of uh, what is it of three? Because by using three, we got to nine, which means there's no, and then here there was nothing we could put. So what we do is we backtrack, we set that to zero, and then we change this to five. And then notice that we keep, I'm scrolling down, we keep using five because that's valid. And then what we're doing is once we decide here, my bad, that we're three, then we continue on from the next solution, we find nine, we say nine's valid, and then we keep going, 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 going until eventually we reach a valid solution. And that is essentially how this works. And that that's all there is really to it. You can apply this algorithm to a ton of different problems. Um, I don't know, it's really useful. It's nice to know. And I personally had a really awesome time making this. And I think it's a really cool program. So with that being said, once again, all the code is on my website. If you want to download any of this, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you like videos like this, let me know because I'm really interested in doing them and I'll definitely make more.